Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our continued services while in quarantine. Uh, it is now the Sunday after Easter. I'm sure many of you, like myself, probably felt a little disappointed that we did not have Easter together in church, but that we had to continue to do it online or spiritually together uh, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. This week I'd like to start with our announcements. Uh, again, just a reminder for all of you, there is Bible study on Wednesday night on Zoom. That is an opportunity for you to kind of get online with other parishioners and to see them and talk to them. Um, while even keeping that distance apart. I know a lot of people are doing these kind of things. I've heard people using Zoom and Skype to have dinners together and stuff like that. It's a great way to just stay in contact, be able to see other people's faces. Uh, and so if you have that option or you'd like to do that, please, please do take those up. Um, other announcements this week, this uh, coming Thursday, I will have a, a Zoom board meeting with Grace Connection. Um, and that pretty much is all that's kind of going on other than uh, Bible study and obviously getting ready for Sunday morning and so on and so forth. So, anyways, I look forward to hearing all of you as I continue to call you and check in on you each week. So, with that, I think it covers all the announcements that I know of. Uh, we haven't had any news on any changes going on, so um, at that I'll ask that you raise your voices with me wherever you are for our opening hymn, Abide With Me, found on page 700 of the hymn. Appearances. 
You see, Jesus didn't just appear that Easter Sunday morning to Mary. She was just the beginning of a, a whole slew of appearances that would have happened over the next 40 days in which each of the disciples would find a way to, to come into contact with Jesus. To be convinced that he was there, that he is alive. Today we look at the next resurrection appearance in chronological order from after Mary's on Easter Sunday morning. We look a little bit later into the day. And we look at two men who are traveling on their way to Emmaus. And they're talking about Jesus and all that has happened in these last couple days. They're talking about the rumors that that he had appeared to Mary that morning. And, and as they're walking along, Jesus enters into their midst without them even knowing it. That's the thing about Jesus. Is now that he has resurrected, now that we have entered into this era where new life is possible, Jesus has the ability to come and appear and be with us wherever we are, whenever we are focused on him. And so right now, as we continue in our, our time of social distancing, I want you to know that if you take the time to, to focus on Jesus, to reflect on him, to think about him, Jesus will appear. He will be there for you. You will find his presence with you. And that presence is a reason for hope and joy and excitement. And as we hear the story today, we'll hear just how excited these two disciples were after encountering the risen Christ. And so I ask that you join me on this adventure through the resurrection appearances. And that you pray with me now as we ask for God to be with us this morning and be present with us, just as he was with those two men on the road to Emmaus. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, by being crucified and resurrected, you are able to not just be where your physical body is, you are able to be everywhere. You are able to be in us and around us, each of us in all of our different locations. And so this morning, Lord, we ask that you would enter into this space that we are in and fill it as we prepare to worship you, as we offer you honor and glory, as we sit and listen to your word spoken from old and taught in a new way. We ask that just as you appeared to the disciples so long ago, that you would appear again to us, that we may feel your presence, be in your presence, have confidence and hope in your presence. Lord, it is for these things that we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Hear now the reading of God's word and God's story. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? 
And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, named Clopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of the angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women also had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going. And he acted as though he were going farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road? While he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to relate their experiences on the road. And how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. The words and the story of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Go and Make of All Disciples, found on 571. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
Gracious and loving God, speak unto us now. Open up the scriptures to our eyes and our ears. Open up the scriptures to our hearts that we might be transformed, that we might be the Easter people who know that you are alive, who live like you are alive, and who go and share the good news with all the world because you are alive and our hope is in you. Lord, let us know that we are never alone. Let us know that we always have you with us whenever we are dwelling on you, whenever we invite you to be among us. Help us to hear your word this morning, to take it to heart, and to live it through our lives. Gracious Lord, do this in spite of me, or through me. For this we pray. Amen. So we heard the story of the road to Emmaus. It is a story some of you might be familiar with that takes place in the afternoon and evening of Easter, that first Easter. And these two disciples are, are lost. They know where they're going physically, but emotionally and spiritually they they have been through the ring. Their teacher, their master, the person who they had hoped would save all of Israel was put to death on Friday by the rulers and the chief priests. All of their hopes dashed against the stone of Golgotha, the stone on which the cross was mounted. To make matters worse, that very morning they heard from the women that, that his body had been taken. And then even some of the other mountain disciples had gone and checked, and sure enough, there was no body there. The tomb was empty. There was no way to even go and honor the one that they lost. And so these men are on their journey to Emmaus. Whether it is their home, whether that is just where they're staying, whether they are preparing to go on an even longer journey, we find them on the road. And they are discussing all that has happened together. They are trying to make sense of it. They are trying to find the good and the God and their situation. And as they're sitting there discussing it, a stranger comes up among them. And he asks them, what is this that you're all talking about? And they can't believe that there's anyone who, who is even in Jerusalem that wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about. And so they sit there and they say to him, what, have you, are you the only one in Jerusalem that doesn't know about Jesus? About what the scribes and the Pharisees and the chief priests did to him? About his crucifixion? Do you not know that he was supposed to be the Messiah that our hopes hung on him? How out of touch are you? And then even this morning, something you may not have known is some of the women among us that were going out to, to finish his burial, they found that the tomb was empty, his body was gone. And if you don't believe them, some of the other men with us, the, the disciples, the, 
the ones that were closest to him, they went out there and they confirmed that that tomb was empty, that his body was truly just gone. And the stranger looks at them. Do you not know all of the scriptures that were written about him? Did you not know that the Christ had to die and suffer these things? Let me tell you the story. And Jesus starts all the way back with Moses. And he tells them all that, all that they should have known, that they should have expected in the Messiah. From Moses through the prophets, all the way up until the crucifixion and resurrection. And it's about the time he finishes explaining that they realize that their journey has has come to an end. That they are there outside of a manse. And, and the stranger acts like he's getting ready to go on. And, and they stop him. And they say, wait, it's getting late. Come. Dine with us. Stay with us this evening. You've opened up our eyes to so much. Surely the least we could do is offer you a, a place to stay and rest. Because evening is is getting close and you really can't make it anywhere else before dark. So he agrees and he comes in and, and they sit down together to dine, to have supper together. And Jesus sits and reclines among them and he takes the bread for their meal at the table and he blesses the bread. And he breaks it to give it to them. And in that moment, he vanishes, and they realize who he was. In that moment, they recognize that it was Jesus there among them, explaining to them all that, that they had missed out on, all that they had forgot, all that they had overlooked. And they turn to one another, and they And they say to one another, we're not our hearts burning within us as he was explaining the scriptures to us. You see, there was something about Jesus' presence out on the road that, that brought them to life. His stories and, and all that was predicted in him and his way of teaching God's word, his way of sharing with himself, of himself. lit a fire in their hearts. Made them desire more. Led them to inviting him in to dine with them. And here at this moment they realize it was him. They had been focused upon Jesus and Jesus showed up. Jesus helped them to understand all that they were talking about. Jesus helped them find what they were looking for. Helped them find their way. And it says that right after that they get up and they head back to Jerusalem, they, they have to go and tell the disciples what they've seen to tell the eleven and Peter and John and James. To let them know that they have seen the risen Christ, that, that the stories are true, that Christ is alive and that they have seen him. It doesn't matter that it's getting near dark now. Suddenly, that journey, that idea of continuing on is thrown away because there is a passion and a power within them from encountering the risen Christ in their lives. And they have to go and they have to tell. They have to talk about it and share what they've seen and what they have heard. And so they run back to Jerusalem and they tell the disciples. And they find out that 
While they were having their encounter with Jesus, it turns out that the disciples there also had an encounter. And that's the one that we will hear about next week. But Jesus is appearing to his people. He's appearing to those who need him. And he is turning that sense of loss, that sense of isolation and loneliness into a sense of hope and joy and togetherness as he binds them together with his appearances. We may be feeling a little lost ourselves. I know for some of you it was very hard not to have Easter in your church. It was very hard not to be surrounded by the disciples of Jesus Christ that you call friends and family. You may be feeling a little lost because the people that you love the most that all of a sudden you have to spend so much time with are beginning to drive you a little nuts. Even in my house, I'm having disagreements with my cats. We're spending a little too much time together. But that is the perfect opportunity for Jesus to step in. For Jesus to show up to be present with you and to give you that hope for what is to come. To remind you of all that was spoken, all that was said about him, all that was said about who he was and what he would do. Perhaps even to remind you again of some of the things he said for you to do, such as loving your neighbor as yourself, including your spouse and your children and and all of those who may be in your house with you right now. To not judge, lest you be judged. And we probably all have things to judge with those who we've spent a little too much time with in the last couple of weeks. But maybe we can cut them a little slack because we probably haven't been the perfect housemate either. For this second week of Easter, let us open ourselves up to Jesus' presence, his resurrection appearances. Let us open ourselves up to focusing on him and allowing him to come and be among us, with us, wherever we are, each of us, even if it's at the same time, because he has the power and the ability to do that just as he has the power to give you hope, to give you comfort, to give you just enough strength to make it to where we need to be, to finish this journey out and to get to the other side of social distancing and to discover the new kingdom, the new world that we will find at the end of this journey. May you find that hope in Christ this week. May you take courage from him. And may you place your trust in prayers in him. Amen. At this time, we'll take a few moments for an offering. <laughs>
never there. That you would accept them to doing your work, that you would accept them to helping us encounter you in our presence. To be fully in your presence. That you would help us in using your gifts to make your presence known to others as well. Gracious Lord, we offer up our offerings, we offer up ourselves to your service, and we lift up our prayers to you. Our joys for the wonders of Easter, for the hope and the inspiration that you give us each and every day, the strength that you provide for us. We offer up our prayers for the Robinson family with the loss of Francis this past week. For Maxine, his spouse, who is, who is in assisted living. We offer up prayers for all of those who are, who are struggling with being stuck at home and need more time to be social. We pray for all of those who are stuck going to work, encountering others, and risking their own self, safety, health, and well-being to serve the rest of us. We lift up our leadership and ask that you guide it. We lift up our denomination, our churches, our congregations, and ask that you carry us through this and that you show us new ways of being church, new ways of doing your will, new ways of encountering a world that is ever-changing and being ready to continue to serve you in whatever world we face. Gracious Lord, it is for all of these things we pray, as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Christ is Alive, found on 318. Please join me with your voices as we sing this song. Oh, uh -huh. 
now. If you invite it, if you'll have it. So may you go this week. Wherever you are. Whenever you are. Knowing that Christ is journeying with you. That Christ will help you find what it is you're really looking for. And that you have no reason to feel lost or lonely.